It doesn't mean there's no sex difference and any male can become female. David, you're a world authority on testosterone and its effects on sports performance. How does testosterone impact the body? Look, the male physical advantages in sports really stem from male puberty. Before puberty, boys and girls can compete equally, but after puberty, men have 20 to 30 times the production of testosterone compared to women. And this leads to larger and stronger muscles, bigger and stronger heart, bigger and uh, more lung capacity, and, lo and longer and stronger bones, as well as a higher haemoglobin. And all of those things contribute to sports performance, to the... the improvement in sports performance. What is the extent of these male advantages? If we consider the times and distances like throwing or jumping in athletics and swimming, the advantages that males have are between 10 to 20 per cent in virtually all of those events. To put that into context, if you look at female world records in all the swimming and athletic events, every year uh, men, hundreds of men, surpass those performances and thousands of them do it over time. And the most telling thing is that at the age of 14 or 15, boys at that age, in early to mid-puberty, already surpass female world records, pointing out that it's male puberty that's so instrumental in that. So that makes it very unfair to have male-bodied athletes in female events. How is unfair defined when it comes to sports? Well, it's a, it's a subjective term, of course, but let's focus on the 10 to 20% advantage in athletics and swimming. The winning margin is less than 1%, and by that I mean the chance of winning a gold as opposed to missing out, getting a medal or missing out, getting into a final or missing out, less than 1%. There have been some recent interesting developments in athletic equipment, super running shoes and two decades ago super swimsuits which produced three to five percent advantages and they were banned by the sports federations as inherently unfair. So uh, that gives an idea that 10 to 20 percent is certainly well beyond what's uh, considered a fair, uh, uh, what is it, an unfair advantage. Look, it's also important to point out that stratification by sex to maintain fairness is not unusual in sports. Sports also stratify by age, by weight in boxing and weightlifting, by skill in judo and by disability grade in Paralympics, uh, all designed to maintain fairness at each level, each strata of those events. Does hormone therapy that suppresses testosterone get rid of the natural advantage males have? It's important to keep in mind what we're talking about is an unfair physical advantage, so the objective is to eliminate it, not just to partially reduce it. But complete testosterone suppression has now been shown in a number of studies not to fully nullify the advantages of males in physical uh, aspects for up to three years. Suppression of testosterone is partially effective. It won't change bones. They'll remain longer and stronger. Haemoglobin will change, but the key things, muscle, heart and lung, virtually don't change or they change very little, maybe 10 to 20 per cent reduction, but 80 per cent of the male physical advantage remains. So uh, it's, it's virtually incomplete and nowhere near completely reversing male uh, unfair advantage. Does the current research support transgender women competing in women's sports if they suppress their testosterone levels for a certain period of time? The key thing is whether the unfair male advantage is removed over a certain time and the answer is there is no duration which removes the unfair male physical advantage of male-bodied athletes in female events. The data shows that uh, you can get some reversal but really nowhere near complete and therefore there remains an unfair advantage.